stationary points. So last lesson we talked about increase and decrease of function, when a function increases and when it decreases. And the, way, the first step to doing that was finding critical points. Well, in this lesson, we're going to talk about all about those critical points, what they are and what their, what their importance is. And we're just going to do a couple ways. We're going to do this based on mathematics, and we're going to do it based on the graph of f prime of x. This is actually in the next video, so we'll cross that out. So if you remember how we got our critical points, we set the derivative equal to 0. Now, it was equal to 0 or undefined. Today, we're only going to focus on, on, on set equal to 0 part. Undefined is not going to be what we call a stationary point. So a stationary point is only when the derivative equals 0. Now, remember, critical points, derivative equals 0 or undefined. Stationary is just uh, where it's equal to 0. So we're going to focus on those. So here's our graph of f of x, a basic f of x graph. Right? And then remember how we figured out where the derivative equals 0? It's all the tangent lines. So here, horizontal tangent lines, and here. Now, the point of a stationary point is if the derivative equals 0, it's either going to be a local max, a local min, or a stationary inflection. We'll talk about that more in a second. That's it. Those are your options. So when the derivative equals 0, you have three options. Local max, local min, or stationary inflection. So let's talk a little bit more about them. So first, let's talk about this graph in general, right? So we have this thing. A global minimum is the like the absolute lowest value of the graph, the absolute lowest y value. So global min, remember, we're talking about min at maximum, we're talking about the y values, will be right here, global min. It's the lowest point on the graph. Likewise, a global max is the highest point on the graph. Now, we'll talk about, I'll talk about this in a bit, but not all graphs have a global max and min. Some graphs go on forever, so they have no max or no min. And our local max, local min are these points, right? Local max, the local min. You notice how local max and local min have they they have that in like shape like this or like that, and it's when the derivative equals zero. Local max, local min. And that's keep in mind. Not like I said earlier. Not all graphs have a local max or min. If I give you a graph like this. A global max is the highest point of the graph. This has no highest point. When I say highest point, I mean like, oh, the max should be 10 or 15. This doesn't have that. It's infinity. It keeps on going. So no max. No global max. Right? There's no one highest point. No global max or min. There's still the relative ones right here. But there's no one highest point or one lowest point. Now, sometimes the global max and min could also be the local min. If I give you a parabola. This has no max, right? No global max. But it does have local max, which is also the local min, the global min. So in that case, it's both. Okay, let's talk about a stationary inflection. So stationary inflection, just want to think of the execute graph, right? If you know that graph, it kind of goes like it's right here goes up, then it kind of levels out for a second, and it goes up again. Anytime your graph does that, we call that a stationary inflection. So we'll say it right here is a stationary inflection. Right, so same idea if it's going down and it goes down again, so it's going down, and then it goes down again, like after a brief pause, where there could be a horizontal tangent line. That's called a stationary inflection. So you have three options. Max, local max, local min, or stationary inflection. Let's see how that works on a graph. Right, so this is my graph as one of each. There's a local max, there's a local min, and there's a stationary inflection. Now let's see what happens with the sign chart. Right, so let's see it's my sign chart. Right, so oh, that's my ma local max, w is zero. And then before that, if you see it's increasing, so it's a plus, and then after it's a minus. So you're increasing, then you're decreasing. So on a sign chart, it goes from plus to minus. So when you go from positive to negative, it's a local max. When you have a minimum, if you'll notice, it's going down then up, right? You're going decreasing then increasing. So you go from negative to positive, so you're going down then up. It's a local minimum. Stationary reflection is when it doesn't change, right? You look at it, it's going up, then it's going up again. Plus, plus, right? It's going up and then up again. Stationary reflection. So those are three options. That's those are three options you could have, and that's how how they happen. Local max when it increases and decreases. Local min when it decreases and increases. Stationary flex when when it does does not change signs. 
right? Same thing would happen here. It would be decreasing and then decreasing. So it doesn't change signs, stationary inflection. That's what this chart's about. That's what the first derivative test is. It's all about, oh, positive, not positive, negative, local max, negative, positive, local min. And here's the helpful chart I use. Right, so the main idea is it's a local max, right? So you first you have to find your critical points minus the undefined ones, just so the derivative goes zero, right? That's how you, that's how you always find a maximum, by the way. You said the derivative equal to zero, and then if you do a sign chart and it goes from positive to negative, it's a max, it's a local max. If it goes from negative to positive, it's a local min. If the sign doesn't change at all, then you go up then up, stationary inflection, down then down, stationary inflection. So that's the general idea. So now let's talk about a process to actually find them and just do some examples. Right, so first, so that's how we're going to get through this. The general idea is it's exactly the same we did last time, right, finding increasing and decreasing functions. We're just going to add an extra step of now we're going to look at the critical points, right? If it changes from positive to negative, max, blah, 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 blah. Right, that's all it is. We're doing exactly the same we did last time, but now we're adding an extra step. So here. Right, step one, find all the critical points. Set the derivative equals zero, and fine. Right, to find both of them. Then we're gonna, we're gonna, then we're gonna make a sign chart. And then we're gonna find right in our sign chart. We do, we'll do test points. We're gonna find out where it's increasing, and decreasing. Because when we do that, we we'll do a little sign chart. Right, we'll find increasing, and decreasing. If it's something like this, it'll be like, oh, plus to minus, that's a max. So like we talked about earlier, if it goes from a negative to a positive to local min, add x equals c or so we'll talk about this in general, but if they just want the x values, all you gotta do is say the x values, x equals whatever. If they say they want a point, you actually gotta find the point. That's me highlighting the point. Um, so that's if they want the point. Now, if you have the x value, remember how, we, remember how we get the y value? As always, we plug it into the original function. Plug into f of x. Again, notice, Right, if I'm doing my sign chart, sign charts always, you plug it in, when you do a sign chart, you always plug into that derivative. If it's a sign chart for f prime of x, plug in f prime. If you're doing a sign chart for f double prime, plug in double prime. But if you want a point, the point is on the original function. So we always plug it into the original function, if you want a point. And again, if you go positive and negative, like I did up here, it's a max. And if the sign doesn't change, it's going to be a local stationary inflection. And I said, as I just mentioned, the question says find the x values. All you have to find is the x value. That's it. Find out, you're done. If it says it wants to find the local min or max, you got to plug it back into the original function to find it. So let's do an example. Um, this is final critical points. Let's change that a bit. Let's find all stationary points of this. So if I'm going to find stationary points, we got to find the first we got to derivative equal to zero and undefined. So I'll take my derivative, 3x squared minus 27, we're going to set equal to 0. Let's just solve this, add the 27 over, divide by 3, 9 equals x squared, square root it, x equals plus and minus 3. Right, so now let's do my sign chart. And as always, now Normally I would do I do my intervals here because we're trying to find increasing and decreasing. But in this case, I'm only want I only want to find the critical point. So I'm just gonna do a sign. I'm not gonna bother with the intervals right now because it's because we're not gonna need it. The key is to find the min and max in this case. So pick a test point like negative four, point in between here zero, and over here like four. Again, you can plug it into anything you want right here. So I'll plug three, four, negative four squared minus 27. Remember, you always do the square part first. That's 16. 16 times 3 is 48. And that's going to be a positive value. If I plug in 0, I get 3, 0 squared minus 27. That's definitely going to be 0 minus 27, so a negative value. And if you plug in 4, well, again, right, if you plug in 4, it's like plugging negative 4. Because you square it, it goes away. It's going to be a plus. So now I want to know if it's a min or max, right? So at negative 3 here, it goes from positive to negative. So that's a max. At 3, it goes from negative to positive. So that's a min. Right, so my local min is at x equals 3. 
Now, in this case, though, it didn't say find the x values. It said find the stationary points. So I actually got to plug it in, right? So again, if my x is 3, if I actually want the point, it's 3. The y value comes from plugging into the original function. So you have to put 3 cubed minus 27 times 3 minus 20. 3 cubed is 27. That is 81 minus 20. So I get 27 minus 101. That's going to be 70 plus 4. So negative 74. Right, not the most fun thing in the world, but has to be done. So 3 and negative 74 is where my local min is at. That's going to be helpful because in the next video, or in the coming video, we're going to talk about how to actually graph all this. I'm just going to be plotting points and connecting them. All right, so that's my local min. My local max is at x equals negative 3. Same idea, plug it in. Right, because I actually got to find the y value. So if I plug in negative 3, negative 3 cubed, Sorry, minus 27 times negative 3, minus 20. This is a negative 81, right? Odd power keeps the sign. Two negatives make a positive, so positive, oops, sorry, 27. So it's positive 81, and then minus 20. So negative 27 plus 61, that's 30, 30, 34. So 34. Right? Makes sense. Local min has a low y value. Local max has a high y value. And that's the idea for local maximum. It's a general consensus. This is another example. Okay, and this one, let's let's just say let's find the x values, right? So let's find the x values of critical points. So we don't, we don't have to plug it back in because I assume you guys get the idea. So in this case, again, as always, got to find my. Let's take the derivative. So bring it down. I get x squared minus two x plus one. Set so equal to zero. Now again, this has a bit of factor. That's how you solve it with the quadratic. And that's x minus one times x minus one. So I just get x equals one, right? Split it up. Get the same answer twice. So I only have one. I only have one critical point. Or sorry. So plug that in. So there's my there's my there's my sign chart. Again, normally I would do the intervals, negative infinity to 1, 1 to infinity, but in this case we're only talking about the, what type of point this is, is all I care about right now. A test point like 0, a test point like 2, plug it into your derivative. So 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus 1, and I get 1, which is positive. Plug in 2, 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 1, I'm going to get 1. Positive again. In this case, right, again, positive and then positive. If sign did not change, that's a stationary inflection at x equals 1. And actually, if I want to plug it in, it wouldn't be that bad. A little bit of fractions, but let's say stationary inflection at x equals 1. So that's the general idea of how to find uh, our stationary points. Let's do a couple more quick examples to make sure we get that to more about focus on the, the calculus. So it's a little review of calculus and see how it goes. Um, this one right here. Analyze the critical points of f of x cosine squared x plus sine. Oh, look at trig. Right? Well, first, we take a derivative. And look at this right here. So we're going to this wrong on the test. This is cosine x whole thing squared. So that's a chain rule. Right? Bring the two down. Leave the inside alone times by the derivative of the inside, which is negative sine. I almost messed that up. Derivative of sine is cosine. So let me write that a little nicer by we said equal to zero. So it's going to be negative 2 sine x cosine x plus cosine. How would I solve this? Right? Good old trig. I would factor out the cosine. They both have one. So factor it out. Cosine x negative 2 sine x plus 1. And then I'll split it. So cosine x equals 0. Negative 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0. All right, solve each one separately. This one, I'll subtract 1, divide by 2. If I do that to negative 2 equals negative 1, divide by negative 2. Sine x is going to equal 1 half. Right, and then again, I don't care how you solve this. 
You could do the chart. You could do the triangle. Any way you want to do it. The key thing to to all those is that if you're solving this, you gotta remember all students take calculus. We are doing sine. So remember the way this works: a is for all, and then all the rest of them. It's the sign. It's a plus sign for the one you're talking about. In this case, I'm talking about sign, so that's a plus sign. It makes these two negative. My answer is a positive though, so I'm gonna put it here and here. Right. If you're doing the chart, then once you have that, you just got you just gotta look back and figure out what angle it is and put it on both of these, and then figure out what the answer is. For me, that's gonna be I'm gonna do I'll do a triangle one half Sogatoa opposite of hypotenuse one two. I know that's automatically a 30 degree triangle. 30 and 30. If you're using degrees, that'll be 30. This will be 180. Then you're 30 short, so 150. Now notice they have in, in radians. IB actually gives you credit for both ways. So they'll give you credit for putting 30 and 150, even though they say radians. But in radians, this will be pi over 6, so 30 is pi over 6. This will be 6 over 6 minus 1, so 5 pi over 6. Over here, cosine zero. Right, it's a little bit tougher because cosine zero is not a triangle. Zero, one are special. It's one of these points here. Now it only wants me to go between zero and pi, so I'm not gonna go all the way around. So here's zero, here's pi over two, here's pi, this is one zero, zero one, negative one zero. Sine e, cosine x, so it's where, cos where x is zero, which is pi over two. Right, look at all that match, like, ooh, done. Uh, you kind of just started. Uh, a question is find the critical points, right? Find, it, find Analyze critical points. Is that a max? Is that a min? We need to find critical points. I got to do a sign chart. Right, so pi over 6 is the smallest one. You can tell by the graph, right? It's over here. The middle will be pi over 2. Then it'll be 5 pi over 6. Right, you pick a test point. Now, without a calculus, it's a little tougher. Over here, I'll probably pick something like zero. In between these two, it's a little tough. I'll put pi over three or pi over four, right? It's bigger than that, but smaller than that. Over here, same idea, I'll put like three pi over four. And over here, I'll probably just put pi. Plug that into there or to there, and then get the sign chart. I'm, I'm, I'll skip that for your sake, but that's all it is, this trig, right? You can't forget about trig. It never goes away. Let's look at another one. The interesting about this one is that they give you a domain here. All your answers will be from zero to, zero to pi. If you want to know, if you're curious why that is, is look at natural log, right? The domain of natural log is only zero to infinity. So that's why it's like that, right? If you graph natural log, it looks like this. So negative values make no sense, right? Don't forget natural log of zero is undefined. Anything less than ain't natural log of any negative numbers is undefined. And natural log of one is zero. So this is the derivative of this. Because that's how we find our critical, that's how we analyze our critical points. Right, so take the derivative, said equal to zero, or undefined to find my critical points, but take the derivative. So nat the derivative of natural log is flip it, times by derivative of the inside, and derivative of that is negative one. So now I'm going to say equal to zero. Right, now before I start, keep in mind, right, if we want to find our critical points, or it's where the derivative equals zero, or is undefined. Already, I might have undefined. Right, I can't divide by zero. So x equals zero is where it's undefined. Now I can solve it to find out where it actually equals zero. So add one on both sides. One equals one over x. Let's do a little cross multiplication. Or multiply both sides by x. And x equals one. Right, so I have two critical points I gotta worry about. This one where it was undefined, and this one where it actually equals zero. So then we do this. Here's zero, here's one. Again, normally I do my little my little um, intervals. But in this case, we only want to care about how to characterize critical points. So, like, pick test points, negative 1, 0.5, and 2. And, like I actually said earlier, this makes no sense. I can have a negative 1. And look at my domain. 0 doesn't count either. So, actually, it's only be 1, and it's something less than, like, 1 half, and something above it, like 2. Right? I don't have to worry about 0 because it's not a domain, and I can't be negative anyway. It's not a domain. So this is actually my sign chart. That's wrong. Right? And the same thing as we always do. Plug this into the derivative, which is this right here. It's not that bad. I'll do it. 1 over 1 half minus 1. Now remember, this is kind of a trick. 
Anytime you have something like this, like a complex fraction, this is one divided by one half, which is just one times the reciprocal, right? So the short answer is the very bottom thing goes to the top. That's the shortcut. That thing goes to the top. So two minus one is one, so it's positive. Two, so let's say over here, right? One over two minus one. Well, one half minus one is negative one half, so that's a negative. Look what's going on. You went positive and then negative. You have a local max at x equals 1. Now, it didn't say x value, it said point, so I got to plug it back in, right? So if I actually want the point, or you always plug it into the original function. So if I'm plugging it back in, let's change the color real quick. I'll plug that into my original function if you want the actual point. If you're doing a sine chart, you plug it into its derivative. But if you want the point on the graph, original function, it's going to be natural log of 1 minus 1. Natural log of 1 is always 0. Natural log or log of 1 is always 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So that's where the point's actually at, 1, negative 1. A few more problems. So let's look at this one. This one's a little different. So it's like your favorite, right? f of x equals x cubed plus ax plus b. There's constant. There's variables in here we've got to find. There's values in here we've got to find. They're not variables or constants. Uh, so this has a stationary point at negative 2, 3. So let's talk about what that means. So that's the key to this whole problem. A stationary point at negative 2, 3. Remember the way we find our stationary points? Take a derivative and set equal to 0 or undefined. Right, but when I do that, Right, I'm looking for x. So all I care about here is the x value. What this tells me is when I plug that into my derivative, it equals 0. That's the key to this problem. Right, what's the stationary point? That's the 0 of my graph. So when I plug the x value into my derivative, it equals 0. And what else? Is, what does the point itself tell me? Well, that point itself tells me when I plug in negative 2 into the function, it gets 3. Right, so a couple things there, right? The fact that it's a point tells me when I plug it in for my x, I'm going to get my y. The fact that it's a stationary point tells me when I take a derivative and I plug it in, it equals 0. That's what a stationary point is, right? It's like a maximum end point. It's a critical point. So let's do that. Let's let, We can set up both of them. Right? Set up the first one. Plug in negative 2. It should equal 3. So 3 is an equal negative 2 cubed plus a times negative 2 plus b. I can simplify it a little bit. 3 equals negative 8. Remember, odd power keeps the sign. Minus 2a plus b. Add the 8 over. I get 11 equals negative 2a plus b. I right, can't go any further there. That's, that's where I max out. Now let's look at the derivative one. Let's do this one, right? Take a derivative of that. So f prime of x. Bring the 3 down, subtract 1 off. Plus, remember, the derivative of this is just a. And that has no x at all, so this goes away. So that's my derivative. Let's do that, right? When I plug in negative 2, it equals 0 because it's a stationary point. So when I plug in negative 2, it equals 0. So 3 times negative 2 squared plus a. Always do this first. 3 times 4 plus a equals 0. Looks like this is going to be 12, and then you subtract it over. Negative 12 equals a. Right? And once you get that, plug it in. Find your b. Negative 11, times negative, 11 equals negative 2 times negative 12 plus b. 11 equals 24 plus b. Subtract that. b is equal to negative 13. So there's my a and b. Right? It's all about what that means. Right? If I give you a point, that always means when you plug it into the original function, it's an equal to y value. If I say it's a stationary point or a max or a min, that just means that when you plug in a negative 2, when you plug in the x value, it's an equal to 0. That's the key to that. Okay, last thing we're talking about, as always, what if I give you the graph? If I give you the derivative, Right, so let's say we give the derivative function. How do you, could you tell where where the maximum happens and whether it's a maximum? Right, it's all about context. Right, remember if this is a derivative, how do you find derivative? You said the derivative equals zero. Right, that's your critical points. So let's, let's look at that first. So here's my critical point right here, negative one, and right here. At three, those are my critical points. Now, is it is it a max or min? Remember the way that works, right? If you go from positive to negative, it's a max. If you go from negative to positive, it's a min. If it doesn't switch, then it's a stationary inflection. So how do I tell from here? Well, look at the graph. It went from positive to a negative. That right there is a max. So it's the local max. 
Then look at the re. You went from a negative value to a positive value. So local min. So it went down and up. If you like it better, you can also do this on a sign chart, right? N negative one, three, and then look at plus, minus, plus, and it works the same way. So that's the general idea. Let's do another one to make sure we got this. All right, so let's look at this one. Right, first, again, this is a derivative. Keep that in mind. It's a lot different. It's the original function is the derivative. So you go first with my critical points. Critical points is where the derivative equals zero. So, or undefined. In this case, it's only zero. So there, there, and there. Right, x equals negative 2, x equals 1, x equals 3. Right, look at negative 2. It goes from positive to positive stationary inflection. Right, it went positive and then positive. So that's a stationary inflection. Look at 1, plus to minus. So it went up and then down. That's a max. And then 3 goes from negative to positive. And that's a min. Okay, if you prefer, you can always have done like make yourself like a little sign chart and just look at the graph. Oh, okay, it's on the positive side, and then it's still on the positive side, then it's on the negative side, and then it's on the positive. Right? And then the same idea. Whatever works best for you. Okay, one last thing. What if, what if, I, what if I give you a second derivative of the graph, right? What's that going to tell me? Well, remember the second derivative? It, if it equals zero, it's an inflection point, but only if there's a sign change, right? If there's not a sign change, it's not an inflection point. Right, so look at this. Same idea, right? We'll find our critical points. What are our key points here? It's the exact same graph we just did, I know, but it's a it's a second derivative now, so it's different. Right, key points with these. Right, so x equals negative 2, x equals 1, and x equals 3. Remember, this is a second derivative, right? So second derivative tells me inflection point, but that's only when there's a sign change. Look at negative 2. Plus to plus, no sign change, not an inflection point. Right? There's no sign change because no sign change. Look at x equals 1. It went from negative to positive. Sorry, it went from positive to negative. Right? I don't care the fact, I don't care how it goes with inflection points. It's the fact that it switches signs at all. It means that it's an inflection point, right? There's no it's an inflection point. That's all I care about. All right? x equals 3, same idea. Minus the positive, it's also an inflection point. All right? So, second derivative tells you inflection points. First derivative tells you min and max and stationary inflections. And that's kind of the idea of the whole vi vi video.